Namaste to all. Maharishi Dhanan Saraswati, he travelled to Pune in the year 1875 and he met thousands of people there and he also gave many pravachans. And some of his pravachans are compiled and released as a book called as Pune Pravachans or in English it is called as Sermons Delivered by Maharishi Dhanan Saraswati. A collection of 15 Upadesha delivered by Maharishi Dhanan Saraswati at Pune in 1875. If you are interested, I would really suggest to buy this book from VedicBooks.com. Really beautiful book. In one of the chapter, chapter number 12, he speaks about the complete history of India. He concludes that why India is in a situation at this at that point of time, why there is no Ved Vidya, why people are in Andhavishwas, why people are doing idol worship, etc. He can he tries to summarize. So this video is very, very important. If you want to understand what really happened, this video might help you. Maharishi has given really beautiful insights. So Maharishi completely summarized Mahabharata here. So Maharishi says, in my previous talks on the history, I mentioned about Chitrangad and Vichitravirya. It is written in Mahabharata that Vyasa performed Niyoga with the two widows of Vichitravirya and Chitrangada. Manu also recommends Niyoga in his Manusmriti. As said, Niyoga was allowed in the Arya community even when the husband was still living. The Mahabharata provides many examples. Vyasa was a learned and virtuous person. He was a great Rishi. He had Niyoga with the widows of Chitrangad and Vichitravirya and as a result, Dhirudrashtra and Pandu were born. We have already said earlier that the wife of Pandu had Niyoga with another person though her husband was still alive at that point of time. These are some of the examples that yoga was a living custom in those days. Remarriage was not so much necessary then. These days, yoga and remarriage do not exist and the result is that there are evil deeds everywhere. This is 1875. You all know, so many abortions are being done. So many fetuses are being destroyed. The sin of one abortion is the same as the sin of killing a learned brahmana. Think a little how many such sins are being committed in this country on a daily basis. Can anyone keep account of these evil deeds? The burden of all these sins is upon us. Look, the deplorable situation that is prevailing in our country is due to the neglect of the ancient social rules. The Vedic way of life has been discarded and the path of Pushti Marga is gaining ground. Pushti Marga, we can say materialism, material, uh, being indulged with the sensual pleasures etc. The heads and the leaders of the different religious groups are leading a life of pomp and show and pleasure. The temples and monasteries have become the center of evil deeds. So many abortions are being done daily. It looks as if these days are the days of the sins and evil practices and wrong acts. At those point of time itself, so many abortions due to you know sexual contacts uh, by the so-called religious leaders. In today's situation, abortions are less but the sexual, sensual pleasures are 100 times more than those days. People use very various contraceptive methods to avoid pregnancy. So, you can imagine, these are Maharishi's words after doing Prataksha. Prataksha means after witnessing all these things. He collected so many data. If you read Satyatva Prakash also, you can understand many more information. It looks as if these days are the days of sins, evil practices and wrong acts. As long as the selfish and sensual people will be supporting such traditions and the common folk will follow them blindly, there is no way for a bright future for this country. I repeat, as long as selfish and sensual people will be supporting such traditions and the common folk will follow them blindly, there is no way for a bright future of this country. These people lay great stress upon tradition or parampara where dharma is concerned but do they abide by these traditions in their routine life? Maharishi says, If the father is poor, then will the son follow the tradition to be poor? If the father is blind, will the son pluck out his own eyes because of the tradition or parampara? We should never accept as parampara or the tradition whatever is contrary to the Vedas. We should follow those true traditions that are prescri prescribed in the Vedas and by the rishis and teach the same to others. Let us continue with our talk on the history. So, Dhirudrashtra was a cunning fellow and Pandu was a virtuous man. Madhuri, one of the wives of Pandu became Sati. Sati, burning of the widow with the body of her deceased husband, 
used to happen. This is also mentioned in Garuda Purana chapter number 10. There is no injunction of the Sati system in the Vedas. It is against the Vedic Dharma. It appears that the customs of Sati started during the kingdom of Pandu. The Kauravas and the Pandavas were given the best education. Dhridrashtra handed over his sons and the sons of Pandu to Acharya. Kripa and Drona for better education. In those days, even the Brahmanas were well versed in the science of archery. They were expert Acharyas in the field of education. Arjuna excelled himself in the archery and that is why he is greatly praised. In the Kaurava party, there was only Karna who was a match to Arjuna. Karna was a Sutta Putra, means a son of a chariot driver and because of this status, Arjuna never showed him any respect. But Duryodhana and gave Karna all honour he merited. He gifted him the territory located at Bengal and appointed him the ruler of that state. Thus Karna got the status and the right of Kshatriya. Like this, because of unwarranted pride and selfishness, the fire of jealousy broke and spread burning down the great empire of Aryavrata. No need to say any more. A certain mean, evil-minded and sensual Shastri, educated fellow called Kanak, was living with Dhridrashtra. By his talks, he was able to arouse hatred in the mind of Dhridrashtra for the Pandavas. It was on the advice of this Kanak that the house of wax that was built and it was conspired to eliminate the Pandavas by setting fire to it at, ni at night when they would be sleeping in it. The Raja Sabha, the cabinet of the king, had already attained a retrograde level. Selfish persons like Shakuni, Dushasana, Duryodhana and Kanaka had upper hand on this supreme institution. Because of their selfish motives and their wrongdoings, the deplorable situation of the kingdom became worst and the dreadful consequences that followed are mentioned in the details in Mahabharata. Vidura got the scent of the plot of Duryodhana. He informed Yudhishthira about it in a foreign language in which the later was well conversant. That means Yudhishthira also knew that language. Thus the Pandavas were saved from being burnt to death at that night. on that night. Yudhishthira, Bhishma, Vidura and many others knew several foreign languages. These days when we say to our educated people like the so-called Brahmanas and the Shastris that there is no harm in learning Greek or other European languages, they retort with this shloka. They say, Na vadeva yavani bhasham prano kantagatairapi hastina tadayamano api na gache jaina mandiram. That means, never speak foreign languages though there may be fear of death and never enter into a jaina temple even when being attacked by a mad elephant. These are man-made slokas which are totally, you know, uh, foolish slokas. Further, Maharishi says, Arjuna is greatly praised for his feet for having skillfully shot an arrow into the eye of the hanging fish. But do not think that such skilled people, skilled brave men are not found in this country in these days. I have myself seen Rajput people doing a harder task, requiring greater skill than the shooting of the arrows in the eye of the fish. The Raja Sabha had decided that Yudhishthira should be crowned king, but Dhridrashtra usurped the throne. And then the Pandavas had to endure all difficulties throughout their life. You all know well that later the Pandavas saw better days and then they performed Rajasuya Yajna. A certain architect called Maya built a wonderful palace for them. The achievements of the Aryas in the architecture are worth reading. Thousands of people attended the Rajasuya Yajna. Maya, the architect, did marvel in his masterpiece. The dry floor appeared to be like a lake. In fact, Duryodhana got disillusioned and he tried to hold up his clothes to prevent them from getting wet as he thought that there was a real water there. Looking at this, Bhima smiled and arrogantly said that the blind gives birth to the blind children and this greatly angered Duryodhana. That means your father is a blind person and you are also blind. On the other hand, Kanak exploited the situation and thus added fuel to the fire here. But Arjuna and Krishna fortunately were able to pacify Duryana, Duryodhana at that point of time. Thereafter, a great feast was held in which the Rishis, the Munis, the Brahmanas, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas and the Shudras, all of them ate together. Please note that all of them ate together. So, this Shudra is a Varana, it is not a caste at that point of time. After that, Yudhishthira was duped in the game of dice. 
he lost everything and with his brothers he had to go into exile and remain in incognito while they were residing in the kingdom of king virat arjuna taught dance to uttara the daughter of that king this is an evidence that in the olden days the princes used to learn the science of art of music and dance now marishi makes a very important statement marishi writes this statement this can be you know noted down by all of us world political power is not lost until mutual hatred and dissension are absent i repeat world political power is not lost until mutual hatred and dissension are absent that means when mutual hatredness is present the world political power will get lost we will lose the kingdom the kuru dynasty got split selfishness and their polluted mind blurred their vision one example would suffice here a great sire like bhishma became unjust and partial it would have been better if only he could have intervened between the two parties and brought them to reason and ordered those who were at fault to be punished in fact sri krishna tried his best sri krishna tried his best for compromise between the both, both the parties but if bhishma had supported sri krishna the war would have not been there but bhishma did not support it bhishma supported duryodhana even though bhishma was a great philosopher he supported duryodhana but he did not do that bhishma did not do that instead he supported those who were wrong and thus allowed the kuru dynasty to tread down the path of destruction and annihilation listen to the bhishma in mahabharata bhishma says arthasya purusho daso dasasvarto na kasya chit iti matva maharaj baddo asma yartena kaurave kauravaihi that is man is the slave of wealth and wealth is never the slave of anyone having this in my mind i am bound to support the kauravas like this due to the pollution of the mind and soaring jealousy among them bhishma drona duryodhana and other kauravas joined hands on one side and the pandavas were on the other side a great war was fought in which three persons in the kaurava side namely kripacharya krithvarma and ashwatthama survived and six in the army of the pandavas the krishna and the five pandavas survived all others were killed the war brought complete ruin all the wealth and the power of the aryas were annihilated in other words the son of the great arya empire had set the wish of sri krishna to re establish dharma on earth failed all these bad things happened because the duty to advise the king was entrusted to the wicked and selfish people such unworthy people were the counselors of the of the king where the persons like shakuni is a counselor and the administration of the state is being carried on upon his advice and in a country where kanak shastri is entrusted the responsibility to decide upon dharma and adharma there in the royal family if hatred division dissension and dis destruction ensure is there any surprise in that on the other hand in the same line of thought if in a contrary an open minded person with sound knowledge like martin luther adhering to the truth and being proud of it though dissenting himself from the common beliefs of the people starts fearlessly to denounce the pope and even be ready to sacrifice his own life if that country begins to awake and prosper is there any surprise in that he is denoting to the westerners at that point of time due to the facts mentioned above the kuru family dynasty was annihilated also the kingdom of sri krishna was dwaraka the yadava dynasty where sri krishna also was a yadava had made great progress in the past but unfortunately due to carelessness and sensual attitude of the people dissension and arrogance brought their ruin too the they fought among themselves and in short time the yadava community met its destruction listen what carelessness brings Baldeva started to consume liquor and got drowned Satyaki fought with a snake and met his death where such stupid acts are done who will be there to listen to the words of wisdom of virtuous people like Sri Krishna Maharaj only the wives finally survived the, after this wars among the living ones there was one Parikshit the son of Abhimanyu who survived he was a little block minded and unable to read and understand the books of the rishis as a result the arsha literature was neglected and the puranic literature became popular his son was called janme jaya and after him vajranath became the king and during their time period the wealth of the nation drained away 
the three main institutions of the state the rajya sabha the dharma sabha and vidya sabha all these three ceased to exist my acharya always says there used to be dharma sabha and vidya sabha today we have lok sabha rajya sabha but there used to be dharma sabha and vidya sabha where rishi muni acharyas used to be there and they has they have to pass agree on a bill they will verify that is it mati- matching with uh, the smritis is it matching with the darshanas or is it matching with the vedic dharma then only they will allow the king to implement something but today it is not there so marshi writes the affairs of the state were being run solely by the whims and fancies of the king after the destruction of the dharma sabha the learned and virtuous people who were qualified to decide about the do's and don'ts of the society and to formulate plans for execution were not needed means we are not needed any more maharishi is like vyasa gemini maharishi and vaishampaya and rishi had already left the world world government that was in the hand of the aryas was lost small regional kingdoms mushroomed here and there the brahmanas became destitute of knowledge and their arrogance had no limit they wrote shloka like, shlokas like this brahma vakyam pramanam that is whatever is said by a brahmana is an authority they also said that that is brahmana is the god of the earth they also said that such wrong concepts started rooted among the people and consequently blind tradition started see this classic shloka prithivyam yani tirthani tani tirthani sagare sagare yani tirthani pade viprasya dakshine they wrote shlokas like this all the places of pilgrimage that exist on this earth are also found in the sea and all that exist in the sea also do exist at the right foot of the brahmana the mass of the ignorant people were influenced by such teachings and they began to follow the instructions of the brahmanas these brahmanas are self made self made caste castic brahmanas caste system when the brahmanas were satisfied that the people are obeying to them they started many types of non vedic rituals like fasting observations shraddha tarpana murti puja idol worship etc and their livelihood became very easy and secured and to keep the common people under their stick they composed shlokas like this a vidwansh chaiva vidwansh cha brahmanam daivatam mahat pranitascha pranitascha yatagnir daivatam mahat they wrote that is just like a fire is a great deva whether it is burning or not similarly the brahmana is a great deva whether he is a learned or not that is caste system basically and further they wrote samshane chapi tejasvi pavako naiva dushtati dushyati huyamanascha yajneshu bhuya eva bhi vardate that is the fire that burns brightly when used for homa is not contaminated when used for the cremation of the corpses it is always pure and sacred similarly the brahmanas are always pure and sacred the example of the fire given in these shlokas is meant to show that the brahmanas are divinities on the earth whether they are learned or not such and similar shlokas were composed and foisted into the books of the rishis like the smritis we can see so many false shlokas addition in manusmriti etc these were composed by these brahmanas to make the people believe that the shlokas come from authoritative books another example is evam yadyapya nishteshu vartante sarva karmasu sarvata brahmana puja paramam daivatam hi tat that is a brahmana may be employed in whatever mean job but he will always be worthy of worship because he is the paramam he is the supreme daivatam he is the divinity during those days if a person happened to criticize or say a word of contempt about a brahmana regarding his bad conduct that person was mercilessly killed thus the brahmanas attained the supremacy and it was accepted that they were above the law there was no punishment for them and as a result all the ills and evils sprouted among them right conduct disappeared shrewdness and exploitations multiplied ignorance spread when such was the sorry plight of our nation a son was born to a king in the city of gazipur who later became known as buddha he condemned the vedas and saved the people from the exploitation of these brahmanas many people became buddhist after listening to his sermons after him and due to spread of jainism a wave of disbelief in god n- nir ishwara vada was noted the worship of idols started in the place of worship of almighty god in buddhism and jainism the existence of god is denied and their followers teach 
the worship of their spiritual leaders and monks, the Tirthankaras, whom they believed to be Mahatmas, great or realized souls, and they worshipped the idols of those Tirthankaras. At first, it was the Jainis who erected the statue of Parasnatha, who was a Tirthankara, and started its worship. Then, following their steps, the followers of the Puranic teaching started to carve the statues of their gods and goddesses for the purpose of the worship. In this way, the spiritual knowledge of the Vedas and the worship of one god disappeared. Most people started going to the temples where they worshipped the idols and they believed that idol worship is an important component of dharma. The Jainis are sympathetic people but they left no stone unturned to destroy the Vedic teachings. They scorned and condemned the Vedas. They asserted that the Vedas contain obscene stories and that they teach about violence, sacrifice of animals, etc. and about the worship of countless gods and goddesses. They added that the Vedas greatly praise the Brahmanas and a few words of praise may be found regarding the Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas. Due to their criticism and objections, the Varnashrama system broke down completely. They even burned down many Vedic books. After that, Shankaracharya, the disciple of Sri Gaudapa, Godapada Acharya appeared on the scene. He believed in the authority of the Vedas and Varnashrama system. How much learned he was in the Vedic lore can be guessed from his commentaries on the books like Sharirika Sutra. He denounced and condemned the different religious cults that came into existence at that time and this fact is proved from this shloka written in Shankaradig Vijaya. So he wrote some shloka to prove his authority in Vedas and then he condemned all this, uh, you know, Jainism and other things. So, this is a short uh, note by Maharishi Dhanan Saraswati. You, you saw our Aryas lost the war. I mean, our Pandavas lost the war. The kingdom got destroyed. Then the blind Dharma Sabha was destroyed. Blind beliefs came in. Then Buddha and, and Mahavira came. They established their own uh, religion against Almighty God, against Vedas. They spoke bad about Vedas. And finally, people lost faith in Vedas, thinking that Vedas are only for Brahmanas. Vedas have uh, many obscene stories. Veda, pro Vedas promote killing of animals. They thought all this, th thought and thought all these things, and finally the Vedic Dharma got destroyed and India got destroyed. Finally, when Vedas got destroyed, India got destroyed. We have to be proud to be an Indian, but we must be more proud to say that we worship that Almighty God who created this India, who created this world. That is the real, uh, you know, India that we must strive for. So Maharishi gave a very beautiful insight, and he was so bold. And finally, Maharishi also was poisoned and killed. Similarly, Shankaracharya also was poisoned and killed. Thank you so much. Namaste. Om.